I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired of writing my shader code in string literals. That's getting old. Let's see if we can patch that up by putting these into files and then loading those files up, compiling the contents of those files, so on and so forth. I'm going to go to my Solution Explorer, right-click, add new item. Let's cheat. I have Visual C++ code, header file. I'm going to call this vertex shader code dot glsl the file type is irrelevant i'm just saying glsl i could say dot sh for shader it doesn't really matter glsl i need something out here and then visual studio says oh you're really trying to create a text file I'll, I'll give you a blank text file so here is our blank vertex shader code i'm going to go back over here copy this go over here paste it alt key down drag my mouse like so, delete key, and I want to remove all of the double quotes on the end. <sighs> yeah, that got old. Control scroll a little bit, scroll out, make sure you're up to high definition on your YouTube settings, and that will be our vertex shader. Let's see if we can read this in as a file and and use it. So let's go to install shaders. Here I say adapter sub zero gets vertex shader code. Instead, what I'd like to do is say read shader code. And what did I call this? Vertex shader code. Vertex shader code dot glsl. And let's let's go write this function. Control C. Uh, Control V. We shall return a string. I'll just use the standard C++ string. Yeah, give it a body if I can type correctly. Const char star file name. And here we go. In order to open files, there's a few ways to, to do it. You can use the Qt libraries. You can use any library you want to. You can use the old C libraries where you get file handles and things. I'm not really familiar with those. So what I like to use, just because I know it, not because it's the best thing ever, but I'll pound include, and include, include, fstream. Okay, that's the... Standard C++ streams, much like IO stream, except this one allows me to interact with files. And then down here I'll say uh, IF stream, input file stream, me input, open that up with the file name like so. We need to check to make sure that that file existed. Let's say if we call our read shader code function, I give it a bad file name. Uh, obviously we're not going to find the file and we should fail somehow. So I'm going to say, hey, if me input is not good, then we should report that and then bomb. C out. Uh, file failed to load. File name. We'll just report that to the console and then very dirty. This is so bad. But again, this is a scratch pad, graphics pad. I really don't care. Bomb the program. We're out of here. Something went wrong. Otherwise, down here, we're in the clear, and we just want to read the entire contents of this file stream and return it back in a string object. It turns out that the standard library has a slick way of doing that. I'm going to use the return value optimization. If you're interested in what that means, go look at my video on the return value optimization. It's in my game programming playlist. I'm going to use iterators. Whether you know what iterators are or not, it doesn't matter. If you do, then this should make perfect sense. If you don't, it doesn't matter because we're just reading the contents of a file. I'm going to make an iterator that will iterate over the entire stream and return everything in the stream. I stream buff iterator. Uh, it will iterate over chars because that's what is inside of my file. And I want to iterate over me input. Okay, I'll put that right there. And then we have to give it an end iterator and this is more like a sentinel iterator, and the way we do that is just by making another one of these char, but not passing anything into it. So what the string constructor will do is iterate from here all the way to the end of the file and create a string. I should close me input, but I'm kind of relying on the uh, destructor to do so for me. Yeah, it's a scratch paddle. Get away with that. Why not? Don't yell at me. All right, we have read shader code, read shader code. Uh, what do we call this? Vertex shader. Uh, 
code.glsl. That returns a string, but we need a constant char star. The way I can get a pointer to the underlying array of chars inside of a string is by invoking the C underscore str function, which is short for give me, give me the C style string. And th that's good until I start manipulating the contents of a string. Anyway, that should hopefully do that. If I run this, if all is well, we will not get a white triangle. We will still get our pretty triangle. Let's see if we do get our pretty triangle. We don't. File failed to load. I, f <laughs> I put an A in there. Ah, let's get rid of that A. A, run it again. Give me a pretty triangle. I guess that proves that that uh, it, it, it failed. All right now we're getting compile errors. Undefined token, invalid char literal. Oh, I left that backslash R backslash N in there. Uh, syntax error. Man, I'm batting a thousand. I had to do some fiddling around there off offline to figure out what was going on, and I'm actually embarrassed I didn't notice it at first. I say readers read shader code. Give me the dot C underscore STR. Well, what happens here is read shader code returns a string, and then I immediately say, give me the dot CSTR, but then once that's done, the temporary object that's on the stack is gone. It vaporizes. The destructor runs, the string's gone, even before I can get around to sending it to OpenGL. So what I have to do is make one on the stack that's going to stick around for a while. String temp uh, gets read shader code. Do like that, read shader code, and then now I can say temp.c underscore str, and temp won't go away until the closing curly here, so we should be all right. All right, let's see. Do we get a pretty triangle, please? I hope I ah, pretty triangle. Very good, very good. Let's uh, use let's use this for the uh, fragment shader as well. I'm gonna come over here, Control Alt L, right click, add new item, uh, header file again. What do we call a shader? Vertex shader code. I'm going to call this fragment shader code dot glsl and enter drag this over here go back to me shader code grab our fragment shader paste it into here alt drag delete get rid of all of this stuff out here I think that should be good yep that's looking pretty good and now I can say uh, temp, I have a lot of duplicate code here, don't I? Temp gets uh, read shader code, their code, and it's frag, fragment shader code dot glsl, and this will be temp dot c underscore str as well. Uh, I don't like duplicate code, but it will be all right. Let's run this. Yep, it worked. We have our pretty triangle now. We're no long. We no longer have to write our shaders in character strings as we were doing over here. In fact, I'm going to go as far as deleting this file. What did I call it? Me shader code. Delete. Yes, fry it. Don't just remove it from the project. Get rid of it. It is gone as gone can get. And then up here, I'll get rid of our externs. As well, control F5. Just make sure everything builds, runs. We get our triangles. Ah, good. Okay, now we can write shader code in these files, and that's feeling pretty good. One last thing before I terminate, I just want to show you that I I'm using this file name here, but I didn't really give a path. I want to show you why the why when I execute my executable, it still found this file. Let me show you why that is. If I hit Control Alt L. Then up here I should have show all files. When we compile our program here, it outputs the executable, not in temp. It outputs it in, sorry, into this debug folder. And so it's graphicspad.exe. So when I say open vertex shader code.glsl, by default, if I just double clicked on this exe, it would look for that file in here. However, the file's not in in here, it's up one in the fragment shader code.glsl. Well, when we run with Visual Studio, Visual Studio actually uses the project directory when we run. When we run the current directory, the working directory is actually the project directory. You can adjust that by right clicking here, click properties, 
And under debugging, you can say working directory. Don't use the project directory. You can say use the output directory or use a different directory. It doesn't really matter. So anyway, that's why I can just type the file name here and it works.